do that. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. My brothers and my brothers, the, the family has made it very, very clear that if there's anyone here who feels like he has a right with this brother, or he feels like this brother owed him anything in this world, then come forward and see the family. This is not a pride issue. In fact, this is a haq issue. And this is actually a sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if you feel like that there used to be a time when you two were joking and he said a word that hurt you once, then forgive him. And if you feel like that there was something once in the days where something took place, whatever the case is, Wallahi, my brothers, this is the time and the moment that we forgive one another purely for the sake of Allah. If there's anything right now that is going to benefit this brother, it is our dua and our forgiveness towards him and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also to forgive him. My brothers, like, like we were mentioning before, you know, we come to the grave, we come to the cemetery now. For what purpose? Why are you here? Why are we here? You know, I'm starting to see a lot of regular faces at this place. What have you learned from the last time you were here? What is it that we take home when we come to the grave? Have we come so we can show our face? Do you think the brother is in need for you to just show your face? Brother, did you go? Yeah, well, alhamdulillah, I went, I showed my face and I called it a day. No, if you're not here to benefit, if you're not here to take a lesson, if you're not here to change your life, then why are you here? You know, my brothers, many years ago, I was in Syria and I visited one of the graves there, one of the cemeteries. And on the door of the cemetery, they had a plaque, a very interesting plaque. And basically it said on the plaque before you enter into the cemetery, it said, do not be surprised. It's speaking on behalf of the dead. Yeah. It said, do not be surprised by us for we were like you yesterday. But as for tomorrow, well, tomorrow you will be like us. Don't come here and be shocked. There's nothing to be shocked about. And don't feel sorry for brother. Well, like, don't feel sorry for the brother. Rather, you should feel sorry for yourself. How are you living your life? And how will you live? What is the purpose of our existence in this world, my brothers? What to eat, to play, to wear nice clothes and a hectic watch and drive a mad car? Do you really think that Allah Hashanillah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that bored and he has nothing to do but to create these little human beings that will spend all their lives competing amongst one? Do you really think that that's the purpose of our existence? Or did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create us for something far greater? My brother's life is not a joke. It's not a joke. You've been created for a reason. And we stand here now and I see many broken hearts and, you know, obviously the father standing next to me, whatever have you. But ask yourself really, now in this moment, what good is a house to this brother? What good is all the money in the world to this brother? What good is an AMG or a Lambert, whatever you want to call it, what good is that now to him? What good is a six foot two blonde? It's of no benefit. It's of no benefit, no matter how many zeros were in you, it's of no benefit now. Granite bench tops, timber bench top, ensuite, not ensuite, is a double story, is it a split level? How many? This is of no benefit whatsoever. This is gone. What is the life of this world? Except it's a deception, it's a dream, it's an illusion. Why is it a dream? Because to believe in the dream, you have to be what? You have to be asleep. Ali bin Abi Talib, he says, you're asleep. And when death comes, you wake up. Ya Hasrati, whoa, where am I now? And it's too late then. You can't go back. You know, my brothers, I always think to myself, and really, let's pose the question. I challenge anyone. That if you could bring out any person in this cemetery, any person, Muslim or non-Muslim alike, if we could, let's just say, let's just imagine for a moment that we could bring this brother back up and make him stand and only have one minute in his life. How do you think he would spend it? What would he do with that minute? We see he thinking, you know, I feel sorry for the brother. You know, again, no, don't feel sorry for him. There are no accidents in Islam. Wallahi, he's so young. So... No, no. His death was decided by Allah 50,000 years before the creation of the heavens and the earth. 
That bullet had his name on it, whether you like it or not. That time, that place, that location, this was all decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The question is, is how did you go? How did he go? What state was he in when he left this world? How are you living your life, my brother? How many more visits? How many more reminders? How many more deaths do we have to see before you and I wake up and pull up and come to understand? Why are we wasting our lives for? For what? For what benefit? So I ask, if we could bring him up, brother, how would you spend your minute? You know, it is only now he knows the value of one, subhanallah. Now he knows the value. If I had just given one more dollar in charity, I would have found it here. Ya Allah, if I just did one more sajda, if I had just one more sajda, I would have found the light of that sajda in my grave. But now it's too late. Now it's too late. Why are we here, my brothers? Why? And how will you go home, man? You know, forgive me, Wallah, for me, my heart burns. Why? Because now everything in our deen has developed a culture. Have you noticed this? Now coming to the grave and to the cemetery has become a hectic thing where all the boys come and everyone holds his phone and everyone records it and everyone can't wait to go back home and post it on Facebook so that I can have the likes on my page. With a blind heart and blind eyes and blind ears, de deaf, dumb and blind as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes them in the Quran. Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, imagine the companion of Rasulullah. When he used to come to the grave, he used to buckle, buckle, crying. Sahaba asked, oh Uthman, why is it when, you know, when Rasulullah spoke about death, you never cried. When he spoke about Jannah, you didn't cry like this. When he spoke about hellfire, you didn't cry like this. Why is it that when you come to these moments, why do you get affected the most? He says, because this is the beginning and this is the reality. If you're successful here, then know that the rest of your journey is successful. But if you fail here, then know every single part of the journey after this is only on a downhill. It's only going to get worse. Today we come, we stand, we pose, we do the little da'a, we call it a day, we jump into our fancy cars and what's the conversation on the way home? You know it. Maybe not now because we're in the month of Ramadan, but usually, because let's go grab a feed, man. God forbid I should take too long. Eh, salah ala sheikh, bro. Doesn't he know we're busy? Doesn't he know we have work to go to? This is your life, man. Come and see, come and see, this is your life. You could be living in a mansion. This is where you're coming. This is the real home. No one sweets here. No granite bench tops here. No women in there, brother. You're alone. You're alone. That's the reality of life here in this hole. What did you prepare for it? What have you done? And when, my brothers, when, you know, again, when are we going to change our life? You know, really, do you not see what's happening in the community? Muslims killing Muslims. Hey. 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 Hey, you really? Muslims killing Muslims? You know, I was sharing with the boys before the rest of you came. You know, and forgive me again, like I said, it's not like we don't have Quran and Sunnah for me to quote. But I need to speak the truth and what's in my heart. You know, I remember there used to be an old movie called Dangerous Minds. And in that movie, they had a very famous so song called Gangster's Paradise. Wallahi, as I was driving, the lyrics to that song came to my mind. The lyrics, the words, even Kuffar could come to see. And yet you and I, so delusional. The words of the song, he says, why are we so blind to see that the ones we hurt are you and me? You wanted to prove a point. Now who pays the price? The mother and the father and the brother and the wife and the children and the kids and the brothers and the sisters. Their lives have been changed for life. Because someone wanted to be a bad boy and prove a point. And that's the least of my worries. You know what's worse than that? In our hearts, we glorify that life. We love that image. We love it. We thrive on it. 
I got news for you, bro. Anyone that's living that life, he chooses that life, you're a scum. You're less than scum. There is a very strong opinion that the one who kills a Muslim for no reason, there is no paradise for him permanently. Permanent. So don't, 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 oh, yeah, you know, shall I do a hajj and... No, 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 no. You're playing games with Allah. When does this change, man? 22, 23 years old, built like a tank. Yeah, I've seen a photo. Built like a tank, tabarakallah. One dollar brought him to the ground. One dollar brought him to the ground. We glorify this life. We love this image. This is un-Islamic. There are no gangsters in Jannah, my brothers. Let me give you the news now, yeah? No gangsters in paradise, huh? Paradise are for those who feed Allah. Paradise are for those who live their life according to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jannah is for those who chose, who preferred their brothers over themselves. The blessed month of Ramadan. While you and I were sitting at home getting ready to break our fasts, this brother fell to the floor never to get back up again. At the moment where Allah is accepting dua from people, someone decided that that's the moment I'm going to be a big boy. Playing God on earth. Playing God on earth. It is Allah who gives life and takes it. And when you think you're a man and you want to play Allah's role, then know that Allah will deal with you accordingly. Allah will deal with you accordingly. Wallahi, my brothers, I, 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 you know, I'm lost for words, really, because it's becoming all too often, all too common. And you know, what's, what, you know what the worst thing is? Is my heart is actually slowly getting used to the idea. When I got the news, brother, did you hear the news? Khair, 23-year-old boy, how did he die? Shot dead. Let me know when the janazah is. I'll be there, inshallah. All too common. So my brothers, please, you know, you're here. You're watching. What changes are you going to make when you go home, man? What changes? And this isn't just about the boys who are lost. Wallahi, there are older men that are more gangsters than you and I will ever be. 40, 50, 60 years old, still hasn't done Hajj. Still owns a house on the river. Still clean shaven. Still doesn't pray. Still doesn't fast. Still, 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 still. Where are you going with your life, man? Where are you going? All of you wait for this reality, for Wallahi, it's coming. Wallahi, it's coming. Death doesn't know numbers. Doesn't know race, doesn't know color. When Allah says bring him, death brings him. So I ask you again, my brother, how will you leave this world? It is the opinion of the ulama and I'm going to end with this. You know, my brothers, the life you choose to live is the way you will die. And know that the way you die well, that is the way that you are resurrected. So my brother, you ask yourself now, you ask yourself, again, this is not about him. I want every single person to ask himself now today, is there a possibility that you can die before tonight? Everyone here is going to tell me, of course, brother, astaghfirullah, what are you saying? Of course, I can die at any minute. But has the truth of those words really entered the heart? How do we know if the reality of those words are there? How? Look at the actions. Look at the way that you're living. What you claim on your tongue, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't look at the tongues. Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at the actions to see what is happening. Inshallah, they will azu, Shaykh. They have all week to azu, mashallah. Inshallah, I'm just going to take advantage of this minute. Ma'alash, please. 
the way you live. ألم يأني للذين آمنوا أن تخشع قلوبهم لذكر الله؟ Allah says, hasn't the time come for those who believe that their hearts should soften, that their hearts should soften and come back to the remembrance of Allah? Hasn't the time come? Hasn't it come? Hasn't the time come for us to change, for us to pull up? Hasn't it come yet, my brother? What? How? The life you live, the way you live, every one of you now. Can you die by tonight? You're going to tell me, yes, I can. Tab, look at your life. Do you pray? Do you fast? Do you read Quran? Are you someone who gives in charity? Are you someone who, when you hear the words of Allah, your heart moves? Why? Because if you die tonight and you don't have any of these qualities, and please listen carefully, some of the scholars are of the opinion that the way you die when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes your life, if you don't pray, that means you were never going to pray. If Allah, Malash Haj, Malash, Allah Yardalak, only two more minutes. Mr. Ajlin for what? Babe, inshallah, they can come back another time, bro. You know? The way you go, bro. You died without salah at the moment of your death. Don't tell me he was too young. Don't tell me, subhanAllah, he had the intention in his heart. If you die without salah, that means you were never going to pray. You were never going to fast. You were never going to give in charity. No, my brothers. Change is now. And let me tell you, Allah is going to hold every single one of you responsible for this gathering. Huh? Allah is going to remind you of this day on the day of resurrection. Did you not come? Did you not stand? Did you not listen? What did you do? So my brothers, we make dua for the brother and we make dua for the family and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant him firdaus al-a'la. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give him the friendship of Rasulullah in Jannah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make him of those who there is no judgment for them on the day of judgment. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the punishment on the, of the grave haram on him, the punishment of the day of judgment haram on him, the punishment of the hellfire to be made haram on him permanently. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite the hearts of the believers. And we ask every single one of you, my brothers, to keep this brother in your dua. I want an amana from every person standing here now. An amana. Are you ready or not? We want an amana. Is there an amana or not? Your brother wants an amana. That today when you sit to break your fast, all your dua is for him. Not some. Don't throw the little cheap one. No, no, no. All of your dua is for him and for his family. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have rahmi upon him. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Allah nawar alayk haj. My brothers, get dirt. Not from the graves. We get dirt from the wheelbarrow, inshallah, and throw it in with your right hand. Three scoops with your right hand as a reminder that you were created from dirt and you go back to dirt.